Oh, great. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good. You know, I'm coming up again. Yeah. yeah. You know, all my fights are big. You know, all my fights are against rank opponents. So, you know, that's that's how I like it. You know. Talk a little bit about you know kind of what he brings to the table and what you've been working on. You know, building up to this. Edmund is a a, a young, a reckless. Uh, confident guy and it's kind of funny because I remember being his age and being where he was at and just you know having hype behind me so I know what it feels like for him. You uh, I mean you had to get on a roll after the, the two setbacks last year was obviously a great year for you. Can you talk a little bit about being able to build on those two from last year you know going forward and kind of you know string some things together here. Yeah I think I got a solid situation um, I've been, I switched my training up um, over the past year and a half at um, Hard Knocks down in Florida and um we have a good group of guys who are trying to get each other better and come to come the training room every day, and it's more of a team effort. So um, it's definitely been working out for me and working out in my fights also. Second time in two years, you know, fights here in North Carolina. What does it mean to bring it back here? It's good. You know, I've been lobbying for the UFC to come back to North Carolina for a long time. Uh, MMA is really getting really big in this area. So you got a lot of upcoming, inspiring guys. Uh, I brought some guys from my team down in, uh, in Wilmington at Brunson MMA and Fitness to come and get that experience, you know, who want to be a fighter uh, for their career long term. So it's good. Definitely have UFC back here and, and get those guys that experience. I have a non MMA related question at all, but I just am kind of interested. Uh, are you a Carolina Panthers football fan? I am. I'm a Carolina guy. I'm born and raised in North Carolina. So, like, I support all the teams, the, the Carolina Panthers, the, uh, Charlotte Hornets, and everybody. How do, you, how do you feel about Cam Newton? Uh, do you want to see him come back? I do, but I think at this point it's kind of like, um, I don't know, maybe unsalvageable salvageable at this point. Um, he been here for all those years, and I feel like he kind of, felt underappreciated this year, but he did a lot for the team. He kind of put the team on, on his back. I remember when the team started out, when they were in South Carolina, and, you know, the, the games and the crowds was, wasn't as big, and he came and he brought a lot to the city. But uh, I think maybe this year off to see him back, I think he'll be um, a camel of the past. Oh, now I can get back to MMA. So I just, you, you wear the Bobcats jersey, and I got really interested <laughs> because it's a fascinating topic to me. Um, so you talked about trying to build build on this uh, 2019 is very successful for you. What does your 2019 look like if, if you're drawing it up? What's the perfect options for you? How often are you fighting? Kind of, do you think by the end of this year you can get to the title shot, or, or do you think it'll maybe take a little longer? That's the goal. Um, that's the goal. Get to that title shot. I haven't touched that yet, and I remember coming in this sport every. MMA journalists had me being top five or champion, and, they, and I heard a lot of people saying if I haven't reached that, then you know something went wrong. So I have some things I need to do in this sport. So that's why I switched up to training camps. I started getting away from my family for you know four to five weeks. It's very uncomfortable, but it's what's needed to you know compete out here. You know, the UFC is no joke. People come out here and they come to get it. So you have to be ready for that, those type of fights and get with like-minded people. So I think you know this this fight. It, it, it's kind of remind me of the Israel fight. You got a young guy with, with a lot of hype, undefeated. But then again, it reminds me of uh, my last fight with Ian Hines. Um, during near undefeated, 13 and one, he had one blemish, but you know a lot of hype behind him. I kind of feel the same way. You know, it's my job to go out here, um, do my thing, and, and rack up another one after this, and I, I think that'll put me right here at a title shot. In terms of uh, changing up the training and stuff like that, is it kind of a better late than never situation? And better to, to do it at, even now at this stage in your career than to never have done it at all and you know what I'm saying yeah absolutely yeah you know um things have to be done you know you have to pull strings and unfortunately this this sport is an unforgiving sport you know you can be on top of the world held a champ held a title for two years ten years and you lose one fight and everybody like hey you suck so you know you have to make changes on the fly and you have to do what's best for you and your family opposed to if somebody's not going to like it or if it's going to hurt their feelings what, what are your thoughts on kind of where the division sits right now? Obviously, Israel is, is going to be facing Yo Romero. How do you feel about that fight, Romero getting that title shot, coming off a loss, and just sort of where he's been at? How do you feel about everything going on at the top of the division? I think he should have. I think he should have earned. I think uh, Israel. You know, he wanted to fight him. He asked to fight him, but I think he should have made him earn it a little bit. You know, uh, Romero's a dangerous guy. Um, in my opinion, I think Romero probably. You know, 
I like him as a favorite in that fight, you know. Um, but, you know, Israel's been going out here looking good, so who knows, you know, he might come out here and, and show what he, he's been doing the past couple fights, but I just think it's a dangerous fight, and a guy who, you know, coming off three losses in a row, you got to make people earn it, you know, so. Should, should, should you be able to do that as the champ and, and say, I don't care if this guy has consecutive losses, I, th that's who I want to fight? And then the UFC should say, okay, then that's who you get to fight. If you were champ, right. would you do? Would you go about it that way? No, I don't think it should be like that because then it gets to uh, MMA is so great and everybody love it because nobody runs it per se. Uh, the fighters don't run it. Yeah, boxing. You know, boxing losses, luster. People kill the whole sport because they, the boxers started running boxing. You wouldn't see the fights until people were way past their prime. You know other people's opinions were. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I like, you know, having a ranking system and making it justified, you know. Uh, one last one for me. 2019 was a very good year for you. 2019 also saw a lot of middleweight contenders, former champions, make the move up to 205. Have you ever considered kind of bouncing around that weight class just because of the success kind of your compatriots at 185 had? Yeah, I thought about it in the sauna. It's always in the sauna, you know, when I'm cutting weight, I'm like, oh, this sucks. I got two pounds to go, you know. I'm going to 205. I'm not fighting 85 again. But um, I like this weight class. You know, whenever I make weight calm down, I'm like, all right, you know, it wasn't that bad. But, um, yeah, I think this, this weight class suits me, you know. I'm, I'm come from, I come from wrestling, so I'm used to cutting weight. And, you know, me in my best shape, focused, grinding, I think 185, you know, is where I feel best at. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Right, thank you, guys. All right, all right.